Once you've figured out how to make your Bolt app functional, the next step is to make it beautiful. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a series of tips that can help you elevate your user experience and design to the next level with minimal effort, and most importantly, no code. There are seven core areas I'm gonna focus on, and the first one is consistent color palettes. And this is very helpful to not only make your app stand out, but also give an identity to your overall app that differentiates it from the thousands of others being vibe coded as we speak. Now, if you're not as artistically inclined, one tool you can use is coolers.co. And what you can do is, if you click on Start Generator, and you can use this pretty much for free, is you can keep clicking your spacebar over and over again until you see a series of different codes for colors that you like. So let's say I keep going and I like these two. I can actually lock these two colors, and then I can keep clicking spacebar until I find the remaining of the color palette that I really like. So if I like these two and I want to decide on that last one there, maybe I'll also like this one. What you can do is you can actually export the entire color scheme as a PDF. So if I can call this Bolt Palette, and then I can click on Export. It'll then download it as a PDF right here that you can open up. It tells you the actual core hex codes. So what you can do is you can take these codes and feed it into Bolt and say, I want you to follow this specific schema of coloring, and we're gonna actually apply this in practice to show you how easy it is to do. So we can either upload the PDF or take a screenshot of this color palette, and then copy this image into either ChatGPT, Claude, or your language model of choice, anything that can actually identify images. So I'll use O4 Mini High. It's now the best image recognition model in the world. So if I put this in here, and I'll say, can you please tell me all the hex codes you see in this image and then put them line by line. And then we send that over. It should be able to read that image, extract those hex codes, just so I can easily copy paste it as a text item into Bolt. So if I now copy this, I can go into an existing Bolt project. And this is one I put together that's your personal writing companion called Storyflow. Overall, it looks pretty decent, but let's say we want to change the colors overall. We could say, please change the color scheme to use these hex codes. And then we'll paste this here, and we'll click enter, and then it should be able to recognize all of these and then apply them to our user interface. And just like that, it's able to apply all the underlying colors on those hex codes to our user interface, change our logo color, change our icon color, and pretty much change the entire experience in one prompt. And an additional prompt we could use is something like use bolt blue, as primary, slate 50 for surfaces and sky 300 for accents, replace all hard-coded colors in components with these palette tokens and update docs. So different ways you can communicate it. I did it the lazy way right now where I just copy pasted all the hex codes and said, do this, apply it across the board. But you could say, apply these hex codes to the buttons, apply these hex codes to the headers, and you can continue on adding more detail if you wish. And the next area is icon consistency. And this is pretty straightforward. It's just making sure that Bolt doesn't tend to bias towards very generic icons, and it tries to match the icons that would make the most sense for all the parts of your web app. So a prompt you can use with this is the following. Pick icons that fit my project's vibrant personality better, skip the generic stock shapes, then use them at the same size, line them up neatly with their labels, and keep their containers uniformly rounded. And this is just more so to make sure that when it displays the icon, it's either in a square format, in a round format, whatever kind of border you're looking for. The next area is typography, which is a fancy word for fonts. So in your project out of the box, you'll notice that with very little instruction, you'll get very similar looking user interfaces with very similar fonts. There are different websites you can use that will show you names of different fonts that you can tell the language model to try to optimize for, or you can use something like 21st.dev, which I'll show you shortly, to be able to take actual components or websites out of the box and emulate not only their structure, but also the fonts involved in creating that website. Now, if you want to make an overall hierarchy instruction so that Bolt knows exactly what fonts to put where, how to create headings or subheadings, you could say the following. Pick one big bold style for main titles, a slightly smaller for subheadings, a standard size for body text, and a small uppercase style for metadata. And use these four styles everywhere. And you can see with this kind of prompt, you are being a lot more intentional and focusing on the details. So instead of using vague prompts, you're using ones that are really dialed in to the exact structure and flow you're looking for. And the next area is accessible contrast. We want to focus on making your app as accessible and easy to use and easy to read by as many people as possible. So let's say you had a user interface where there was prominently a lot of blue going around. 
What you could say is double check that the text and buttons are easy to read on their backgrounds, darken the main blue where needed, and add a clear outline when you tab into any clickable element. So that's one small example of a prompt. But once again, if you use an app like Coolers, you can actually click on an option that will help you make your color scheme as accessible as possible. So if you go back into Coolers and you click on Start Generator, we're going to click on a very different icon this time. So let's say we go and pick a palette. Let's say this one. We can click on this icon here and optimize it for something like color blindness, where you can pick a specific condition, let's say Try Anomaly, and then it will show you the converted version of those colors that would be viewable by folks that suffer from this specific strain of that disease. And if you wanted to take a look at what this might look like on your Bolt website, you can click on Apply, and then you can click on Visualize Colors, and then it'll actually show you the example of that color scheme on a mobile UI, font, a landing page, etc. So you can see here, this one actually looks pretty sleek. You can click into it, look deeper, and then this will give you a good prototype as to how you can manage that balance between beauty and accessibility. Another important area is micro interactions. And what this means in plain English is instead of your website just loading, it maybe loads with a gradient or with a fading set of elements that pop up as the screen loads. These kind of prompts are typically harder to articulate, so it's really important to understand the basic structure. So a sample prompt you can use here is, have each page fade in when it loads and make buttons gently grow on hover, while still supporting users who prefer reduced motion settings. So instead of just showing you this prompt, I'll show you what it might look like if you apply it to a bold project. So if we go back to our StoryFlow app, I applied the exact same prompt that I showed you here, and then this is the result. So if we open up the page, click on connect to project, we'll get a page that now loads, right, very quickly with the button coming last, growing into the screen. Nothing too crazy, but using these types of prompts add some extra oomph to your overall user interface. And the second last category is responsive layouts. And in here we focus on not just making it web app responsive, but maybe mobile responsive or both. So a sample prompt could be on phones, show two columns of cards, on tablets, three, and on desktops, four. Keep images in a 4 to 3 aspect ratio shape. Collapse the sidebar into a hamburger menu on smaller screens. And make sure that nothing causes sideways scrolling. So if we were to go into Bolt, I'll show you how you can get a preview of what your app would look like so you know how to better prompt it. So all you have to do is actually use this icon on the top right and put it into responsive mode. And you can basically emulate how it would look on different types of devices like a iPhone 16, a Pixel 9, as well as any form of other application as well, like a Galaxy 24, and see what that process or journey would look like for a user. And you can zoom in just to make sure you can visibly see everything. And this is one of the best ways to provide visual feedback and tell it, you know what, for a phone, maybe for a Galaxy 24, optimize it so these different buttons are in these different areas. In terms of overall design, if you look at 21st.dev, it is a series of pre-created React components and all other kinds of components that you can use and basically import into your Bolt project. So if I take something like this, elevate your vision, and I click on copy prompt, this will provide me with a prompt. I can just paste into Bolt and recreate this entire design with this font scheme as well. So it's a very easy way to go from good to great. And you'll see if we put the exact same prompt into Bolt and just say use this design for my marketing agency called Bolt Marketing Inc. This is the entire prompt that we got directly from 21st.dev. And within a few minutes, we get something that looks like this. So if we open this up in a new tab, connect to project, and then open the project up, we get the same exact design that you saw on screen, and you could obviously keep building on this and add different components and different parts and basically use the fonting styles and apply it across the board. And you don't have to just use components for entire websites. You could use very basic styles or components for different pop-ups, for different effects on the page, especially when we relate it back to animations. You can use something like this where we can load this and refresh and you see this generating code animation. We could do this and say, before you load the page, generate this and put this at the forefront and then load the page right after. So you have a lot of optionality that you can use 21st.dev to cheat time for. And last but not least, the final area to take a look at when it comes to improving your general UI and stepping things up is white space and spacing. A lot of times you can make an interface where things can be a bit too crowded or the complete opposite problem, where you have way too much space and the components of your actual website look way too small. One way you can work around this is adding what's called padding across the board. Now you can do this using prompting and as you go through, you can actually take physical screenshots of your user interface, feed it to something like either Bolt 
or ChatGPT and say, I'm trying to accomplish X, Y, Z. What is the prompt that I need to provide Bolt in order for it to understand to add spacing in specific areas? So a sample prompt could be give every section plenty of top and bottom padding, add more gap between card rows, ensure each subheading has extra space above it, and fix any spots that feel cramped. So like I said before, you can use things like ChatGPT and Claude to help you out, especially with image recognition. So if you take this screenshot of the page we have here, and we paste it into something like ChatGPT using 04 Mini High, we could say the following. I want you to take a look at this web page and recommend a prompt that would improve the overall layout based on the feedback that you'd come up with if you were to take on the role of a professional designer. Right, so now we can create a persona assignment in ChatGPT, or we can actually take the screenshot, put it back into Bolt, and maybe we could use, let's say, the chat mode where we paste the image and ask the exact same thing. So let's actually take that exact prompt and put it into Bolt in chat mode. Because it's in chat mode, it won't make any changes. It'll just basically make the AI reflect about the user interface. And with OpenAI, we have like virgin eyes on the actual design. So this will come up with a series of feedback as well. So both OpenAI and Bolt, and actually Bolt's version in chat mode was really good. It was able to look at it from the perspective of a designer and come up with all this feedback, like saying badge prominence, call to action, geometric shape integration, etc. And you can see here, it put together even a prompt that I could give to Bolt to execute. But now that I've had the back and forth with it, it can basically use this. And if I unclick discussion mode, I can say implement this plan and it will actually execute its own feedback, which is a very interesting feedback loop to have with Bolt to keep improving your designs. So you can build in non-chat mode and you can have it reflect in chat mode and implement its plan to keep improving your UI and stepping up your game every single time.